is quick internal medicine and we are discussing the EKG topics and today we are going to talk about all the T waves T waves of EKG are too tall are they too tall mm -hmm. to understand this what we have to do is we should know what's the normal variation of the T waves first you tell me what the T wave indicates why there is a T wave in EKG P Q R S and a T P Q R S and T right we're gonna talk about the T wave here the T wave it corresponds to ventricular Yes, you are right. Ventricular repolarization. Ventricular repolarization. And we have normal variation of the T waves. It has a different, what you call, uh, it can be inverted in a normal, what you call, leads. So, which are the leads that we see variations of T wave? Okay. Remember that as I said, T wave shape and orientation vary from lead to lead. Okay? Right. Now let's draw the diagram. Okay? Lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. 1, 2, and 3. AV, sorry, it should come like this. Okay? AVR. This is ref, okay. This is A V L, right? Then we have V, V one, V two, V three, V four, V five, and V six, right? V V V V V. Those these are the twelve EKG leads, right? Six V one, two V six, three A V L A V L. Oh, I didn't draw the A V F. A V F would be here. A V F okay right 12 now it is normal for the T wave to be inverted in lead A V tell me which A V L R or B F it's a A V R because the current is flowing in this direction right so that's why the T wave will be inverted in A V R so that's a normal variation okay inverted T wave you see in a V R but in some cases remember T wave inversion can also be normal in leads 3 V1 and V2 means this one this one okay and V2 and this one even V2 V3 V4 V5 and V6 okay so if this if you see the what you call T wave inversion in these leads also then it can be normal okay and today we are talking about are the T waves too tall what are the questions you should ask for yourself if you are looking at the T waves are they too tall are they too, too small are they inverted right we know the normal variation the inverted variations okay of T waves where we see it's a AVR V1 V2 and lead 3 in some cases okay remember so let's talk about the T waves too tall as we have a general rule for our wave that it should not exceed more than 25 millimeter, we don't have such a rule for a T wave. Okay, the T wave's height can vary. There's a no general rule. But remember, it should not be more than half the size of preceding QRS complex. I will repeat: the T wave should no more than what you call half the size of preceding QRS complex. Means if you are looking at the T wave and you are telling it's a tall, means you have looked at the preceding QRS complex. Means if you want to look T wave, look at the QRS complex also. If you want to look T wave, look at the QRS complex also. Right? This is really very important, guys. Okay, let's talk. Well, it's not very easy thing to recognize the tall T waves compared to what you call more than half of the preceding QRS complex. If you look at the EKG often, then it will be very easy for you to identify the abnormality in the T waves. Right? 
Now, if you suspect, okay, now you say the T waves are really very tall. The two things that it should strike your mind, which are those? One is hyperkalemia. This is emergency condition. And second one is acute myocardial infarction. Look at this. Both the conditions are emergency. Right? Means if you see the two tall T waves, you have to keep your fingers crossed. It can be either increased potassium in the body that's hyperkalemia or acute myocardial infarction. We know that hyperkalemia can cause tall tender T waves, okay? And may also cause the widening of the T waves so that the entire ST segment is incorporated into the upstroke of the T waves. Remember, okay? very important and the hyperkalemia you know very well it can also cause flattening and even loss of p waves lengthening of the pr interval widening of the qrs complex arrhythmias okay so what you have to do if you see the tall t waves just measure the potassium level very important now let's talk about the acute myocardial infarction remember the cause for T waves, tall T waves in acute myocardial infarction is also a hyperkalemia. How? When there is an infarction, what happens? There is a death of the cell in that localized area. When there is a death of the cells in the localized area, what happens? There is a release of the potassium from the damaged myocytes. And this leads to localized hyperkalemia. And this localized hyperkalemia causes tall T waves. Right? So there are plenty of EKG findings to diagnose the acute myocardial infarction, not only the T wave, okay? We have different what you call uh, findings that are important if you want to say that the patient is suffering from acute myocardial infarction. Tall T waves are particularly characteristics of acute posterior myocardial infarction. Remember, this is really very important. They are particularly characteristics of posterior, acute posterior myocardial infarction. Why? Because infarction of the posterior wall of the left ventricle leads to reciprocal. Oh, that's a mirror image, right? Changes when we move from perspective of the anterior chest leads. Okay? That's what you call uh, usual myocardial infarction appearance of a pathological key waves, ST segment elevation, inverted T waves will appear as R waves. Okay? And ST segment depression and upright, okay, tall T waves when viewed from V1 to V3. Okay? So this is regarding the basic general rule of what you call um, T waves, okay, how they are caused and what is their importance and what are the causes for uh, tall T waves. And we discuss about the normal variation of the T waves. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.